My name is Brian Wood, Director and Cloud Advocate at Teradata. Welcome to this LinkedIn Live session, Teradata Vantage on Azure, powerful, scalable, secure analytics in the cloud. What you're gonna hear about today in the next 30 minutes or so is Teradata Vantage on Azure, solving your most complex data challenges at scale. This one slide really kind of summarizes everything you're gonna hear. It's about being able to analyze all your data and use all your data, no matter where it is, unifying analytics, data warehouses, and data lakes all in the cloud. We're gonna talk about how Teradata Vantage software is integrated with Microsoft Azure first party services, and then the worldwide customer adoptions across several different industries. Some of our sample customers, the ones that have been publicly announced are shown here, not all, but just a few. So you can see American Airlines, Papa Gino's, Procter & Gamble, US Air Force, Siemens Health and Ears, Deutsche Telekom, SNCF, France's national uh, transportation uh, company, and United Cir Supermarkets. So these all illustrate the fact that uh, large companies are using Teradata Vantage software for advanced analytics, regardless of whatever industry they're in. So in case you don't know who Teradata is, here's just one slide, Teradata at a glance. We are a cloud-first analytics software company. We have transitioned from hardware-based infrastructure to purely focused on software. And as such, we've moved from perpetual licensing to subscription. In fact, we'll be nearly 100% subscription by the end of the year. We have scale, nearly 2 billion in revenue. We are profitable, over 9,000 people, uh, very experienced. And we've been at this, the data analytics game for over 40 years. So we really know what we're doing, we're proven. And we absolutely love the cloud. As a software focused company, we love the cloud because it's a, a great complement to what we do. We don't have to worry about deploying infrastructure globally. We leverage the global footprint of companies like Microsoft Azure, and we've invested heavily both in terms of software development, but also people and training and literally millions of dollars investment in these solutions. So specifically for Microsoft, we are very committed. We are both a gold cloud platform partner and a gold data analytics partner. We have multiple levels of alignment between the companies, everything from top level executives, product management, engineering for roadmaps, marketing, go to market, sales compensation, you name it. So we're very committed and very much aligned between the two companies. So when we talk about Vantage in the cloud, what do we mean? Vantage is the name of our flagship software offering, it used to be known as Teradata Database. We've since it, evolved it quite a bit. Uh, the key value prop for Vantage is companies can use any tool, any language, and 100% of their data to do analytics. So any tool, meaning any the typical uh, ETL, business intelligence, visualization, uh, data integration tools that you know and love from whatever ecosystem you currently have. Any language, not just SQL, which is the lingua franca for business analytics, but also languages like R and Python, popular with data scientists, also SAS and Java and others. So you don't have to use only one language or only one set of tools with Teradata Advantage. You can use whatever you prefer, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you're best at. And then 100% of the data, we'll talk about a little bit this, meaning it's not just this, the data in Vantage itself, the Vantage database, which uses premium storage for high performance analytics, but also data in other repositories like blob storage or ADLS or Hadoop or HD Insight or Oracle database for operational data. You name it between um, Vantage itself and its capabilities and uh, complementary software like Teradata Query Grid, Teradata Native Object Store, reach out and connect and query data in these other repositories. So what customers do with all this capability is they drive a number of business outcomes. And so Vantage is not just SQL analytics, but a bunch of machine learning analytics, embedded functions. So you can see here are some, just a few of them, time series, path and pattern, machine learning, text and sentiment. So it's not simply analyzing relational data in rows and columns, but all, all kinds of data. It could be sensor data, it could be image data, photos, web clickstream, uh, social media, you name it. And so between the capabilities of Vantage and the inherent visualization capabilities, whether it's in Vantage itself or with tools, things like Power BI for Microsoft, for example, you're able to easily visualize 
the results of the analytics and have more insight into what the data is telling you. So all this is great, this is Vantage. So let's talk about Vantage in the cloud. What this means is that Teradata provisions and manages the environment for you as the customer. So uh, cloud, think of it as, uh, you know, as a service. So we are literally provisioning Microsoft Azure infrastructure, the virtual machines, the storage, and we load the software and we configure that environment for you. We're not touching your data, we're not doing your analytics, but we just manage the environment. So patches and updates and security, daily backups. Uh, there's a 99.9% .9 availability service level guarantee. All of these things are inherent in these subscriptions of Vantage on Azure. And it's the same software as customers use on-prem. That means all the same use cases that they're doing for analytics are also being done in the cloud. So production analytics, disaster recovery, test dev, quality assurance, discovery analytics, we call data labs, you name it. Um, all the traditional ones plus new ones that take advantage of the scalability and elasticity and the ability to only pay for what you use in the cloud. All these are possible and not just possible, customers are actually doing these. Um, so it's very, very exciting. It's a whole new world. So what is the value prop for Vantage in the cloud? Really, uh, there are a number of things. Some are inherent to the cloud themselves, faster time to value, literally taking months down to minutes in terms of provisioning new capabilities. Uh, we talked about the same software, so low risk migrations from on-prem into the Azure environment. The same existing skills and code base, literally the same software. So there's no need to retrain, retool, recode. Um, it's much lower risk and much faster migrations. Cloud is inherently scalable. We have vertical scalability, horizontal scalability, separation of compute and storage. So it's not like the old days where it was only fixed configurations and if you bought one, you necessarily had to get the other. Now it's independent compute and storage. So you can start small and grow as needed. There's no need to overbuy or leave money on the table. And we have flexible subscription options, flexible cloud pricing. So we have both capacity-based pricing and consumption-based pricing, or pay only for what you use. So lots of choice, lots of flexibility. Our cloud subscriptions are also very comprehensive. So everything on this table is included in the subscriptions. The thing I'll point out, I think it's important to underscore, is that each customer is provisioned in their own subscription. These are single tenant environments. So what this means, there's no sharing of infrastructure. It's not as if there are multiple customers in the same database. Each customer is provisioned separately from the others. There's no noisy neighbor. Uh, so that means you get all the performance, you get all the availability of the IO, and you don't have to worry about um, you know, any, any intrusion from another customer in the, in the domain. Each customer is separate. We talked a little bit about elasticity and scalability. It's very easy to do using the console. It's a web-based portal through which customers monitor and manage their environments. You can scale vertically. That's changing instance sizes. You can scale horizontally. That's changing the number of virtual machines. You can stop the compute independent from storage and then restart it later when you want to in order to optimize spend. Uh, you can expand storage independent of compute. So all very flexible. And frankly, a lot of longtime Teradata customers are surprised at all this flexibility that they get with Vantage in the cloud. Another cool thing about Vantage on Azure is the ability that we've created through integration with Azure first-party services. So for example, native object store is inherent in Vantage, the latest software. And this is the ability to natively query data in Azure blob storage. So it used to be customers have to use query grid, basically a bridge or connector from Teradata database or Vantage into another repository. But since object storage is so popular, particularly for data lakes, we integrated that capability right into Vantage itself. It's not an add-on, it's inherent. So native object store is very convenient. You just initially specify foreign tables and then after that, users never need to know or think about where the data is, they just query. So this is what we mean by using all of your data, whether it's an object store or whether it's in uh, Hadoop or Oracle or other repositories. So between native object store and query grid, which we've had for a long time, very proven, uh, customers can literally use all their data. And when you use all your data, you get better analytics. The more data, the better the analytics. This next slide shows some of the many 
first party integrations we have with Azure. I've, you know, Query Grid and Native Object Store and using uh, the VMs and um, premium storage, those are just some of them, but you can see some of the others. We talked about Power BI, there's Data Factory, uh, Event Hubs, uh, you know, HD Insights, many, many are shown here and there's many more that are less relevant to Vantage but still can be taken advantage of um, to get the most value from your analytic ecosystem. And then many of our customers, I mentioned hybrid cloud. Many customers want a hybrid environment of both on-premises and cloud, but we also support multi-cloud environments, so more than one public cloud, and then hybrid multi-cloud, which would be a combination of on-premises and more than one cloud. So, you know, whether it's for uh, risk reduction in case one provider has a network outage or whether it's just um, you've got different business units, maybe through acquisitions and they have different cloud strategies, uh, you know, each customer's journey to the cloud and where they start, where they end up are in the timeframes, those are all different. And frankly, we support them all because it is the same software everywhere. So you're not limited in what you can do where. Um, you can start in down one path, and if you change your mind, you can switch because the licenses are portable, uh, very flexible and very powerful. And it gives you kind of the peace of mind that uh, you can take action today and know that if you change your mind, you it's easy to, to make that change. It's not like you're stuck or you're gonna leave money on the table. One specific capability I wanna point out, I, I mentioned it before, the pricing models, is consumption pricing. This is the ability to pay only for what is used. And this is pretty uh, unique in the industry in the sense that not only do we have capacity-based pricing, which is great for high utilization workloads, things that are always on or nearly always on, fairly steady state type utilization, but for the other end of the spectrum where it's sporadic use or low usage or, or unknown usage, you have no idea. Consumption pricing from Teradata, which is usage based, is an ideal solution. And this means you literally pay only for what you use for successful queries. You're not paying for when the lights are on, you're paying only for when you're using those resources. And we use logical IO as, as the metric, we call it a vantage unit. Uh, these are um, managed environments, so automatic elasticity, uh, Teradata monitors and automatically adjust the resources depending on the utilization. Uh, it's easy to allocate users by department and then at the end of a reporting period, like a month, to see which department used how much resources and then charge back. Very convenient and uh, getting a lot of buzz with our customers and prospects. So how is Vantage in the cloud different than others? Well, if we look at the market, we can kind of boil it down to a two by two matrix. You've got sort of utilization on the vertical axis and enterprise analytic functionality across the horizontal axis. And so you've got your basic needs down into the left and you get your more advanced needs up into the right. The enterprise analytics capabilities are what Teradata is known for, right? The largest of the large, the most sophisticated analytics needs. They need, um, guaranteed response times on queries, very high concurrency users and applications. Um, so that's what we're known for. That's that's you know where we're, where we're famous, quite frankly. But then there's also a large base of need for what we call basic data warehousing. So it's simpler to use, much lower concurrency, easy elasticity. You spin it up, you know, you expand it, you bring it down. It might not be on 24 hours a day. It might be only be, you know, eight or 16 hours. Uh, low concurrency, like I mentioned, more for basic analytics, reporting, for example, not, you know, run the business. So what many people don't know is with Teradata capabilities and our pricing model flexibility is we really, really can cover the whole gamut of, of these market needs. So it's not the case where you only use Teradata for the, your high end needs and then you go with a cloud only provider for your lower end needs. You can use Teradata for it all. And the benefit of that is you don't, again, you don't have to learn new tools. You don't have to have different capabilities in different environments. You can have a kind of more basic environment with base tier software from Teradata. And then when it's time to operationalize or, or promote to production, it's the same software. You can just you know, move it from one environment to the next and boom, you're in production. Another differentiator for Teradata in the cloud is our license portability. This is the ability, so I talked about not only the same software everywhere, 
on-prem and cloud and, and so on. But we make it easy from a licensing perspective to move. So this is what I was referring to is you don't have to leave money on the table if you changed your mind. So today your strategy might be, you know, mainly on-prem and then tomorrow you want to move a bunch of stuff to Azure and then you get a CIO a year from now and a new CIO and they want to uh, pull some things back from the cloud or move even more to the cloud. Hey, no problem. Our licenses are portable and you can just move them around and split them up as you want to. Makes it very convenient and um, it supports your ability to take action today and not have to plan everything out far into the future. Another differentiator for Teradata is our performance. We're, as I mentioned, up and to the right, we're known for maximum performance, minimal risk. It's field proven. We literally have customers doing millions of queries an hour, uh, you know, billions of queries a month. We even have a few doing trillions of year uh, queries. It's pretty incredible. So all these capabilities flow through to Teradata in the cloud, specifically Vantage on Azure. Uh, we've talked about hybrid cloud, the fact that many customers have large data repositories on-prem and they want to add cloud, and so it's easy to do that with our software. And then another differentiator, since we're on the topic, is we're field proven from our query optimizer and our workload management. So workload management is the ability to prioritize queries and users. Not every query is equal. Uh, some things need to you know, take the fast lane, so to speak. Think about it like a traffic jam, and you've got an ambulance, right? The ambulance gets priority. Well, it's the same thing with queries. Some queries need to you know, cut to the front of the line because it's for the CEO, it's for end of quarter reporting or something like that. And you need guaranteed response times. Our workload management enables that. Um, and then software optimization. There are alternatives in the market that really tout their auto scale capability, the, the opportunity to add more hardware to increase the ability to support more users, for example. But Teradata, we think differently. We think it's more important to leverage software to get more output from your environment. So using indexing, for example, you can get orders of magnitude better performance from your environment than simply adding hardware. And using software is free. It's part of the software. You've already subscribed to it. But when you add hardware, you're paying for that. So that's a brute force, uh, you know, expensive way to increase your performance if you're only adding hardware versus you use the software itself and you can get uh, much better performance out of your environment. This next slide really kind of summarizes a lot of what I've talked about. How is Teradata different than competitors, specifically Vantage on Azure? So, you know, there are a couple things at the top which are similar, but below that, massive differences, whether it's, you know, hybrid deployment, the advanced analytics capability, uh, high concurrency, those ability to meet service level agreements and so on, lots of difference. So if you want to learn more about that, certainly, you know, reach out to your Terrier account team or check out our website or some of our other resources. We also want you to know about our joint marketing with, with Microsoft. We have a, uh, a number of campaigns going on. Uh, this one is is pretty slick. I'm I'm you know it's I'm very pleased with it. And in terms of what's available, we've got resources out there. An ebook you can specifically learn about Vantage on Azure, and links to videos and white papers and other resources. And ultimately, what we recommend is you know with your journey to the cloud, start with education. Right? Don't just believe what vendors tell you. Don't just believe what I tell you. Go do your own research. Go see what other customers have to say. Talk to them. We have a peer advantage program where you can talk to other customers and get the skinny without us being in the loop. Um, and so that's the best way to get the real scoop on what's going on, not just listen to vendors or you know believe the marketing hype. So that's the highlight of Vantage on Azure. With that, we can go to Q&A and take some of your questions and, um, and have at it. All right, we've got some good questions coming in here. Um, I'll just kind of take them in order. The first one is, what do you mean by 4D analytics? So 4D, think of it as um, space plus time. So the X, Y, Z axis uh, plus time. So uh, many different companies can use this. You can think of uh, transportation companies in terms of uh, you know, where they are and at what time. You can think of retailers even like within a store, the, you know, the item within a, a row on stocking on the shelf. 
So there's a number of different things. And so this is a sophisticated type of analytic and, um, and Teradata is somewhat unique in having this capability. Another question, talked about Azure Blob, but can Vantage also connect to ADLS? The answer is yes, soon. Um, Azure Data Lake uh, service will be for Gen 2, we will be able to connect to that within about a month or so using the same API as Blob. So uh, we'll be able to have essentially all bases covered within Azure for object storage, both Blob proper and then ADLS Gen 2. Now the question, does NOS replace Query Grid? The answer is no. Uh, native object store, which is inherent advantage, and Query Grid, these are complementary capabilities. Uh, native object store is inherent, meaning it's part of the software, it's part of your subscription, no additional charge, and that's built and optimized specifically for object stores. So Azure Blob and ADLS Gen 2, like we just talked about. Um, whereas Query Grid uh, can connect to object store just fine. It's not optimized for object store. Query Grid, uh, though, still can be used for other repositories. So it could be like Hadoop, your Oracle operational database environment, um, Presto powered environments. So there's a number of different query query grid connectors that can be used. So the combination of both native object store and query grid, you don't have to use query grid. It is optional. It is a, a paid option. It's additional, uh, but native object store is inherent. And many customers are moving their data lakes from Hadoop to object stores. And so it's kind of, it's a nice win-win there. So you can have your, your data lake data in the repository that you prefer, um, infinitely scalable, very low cost, easy to manage. And you can have that native optimized querying capability uh, through Vantage. Why would I use Teradata for basic requirements when I could use Snowflake or Redshift or BigQuery or Azure Synapse Analytics? A great question. And um, the, basically the short answer is consistency. So we know that enterprises have a whole range of analytic requirements from uh, small and tactical short-term um, basic reporting, you know, not particularly difficult or challenging from, a, from an analytics perspective, all the way up to highly sophisticated, um, many table joins, massive amounts of data from multiple repositories at high concurrency with uh, performance requirements, service level requirements, uh, SLA needs for the business. And Vantage, Teradata software, can handle them all. And the benefit of using Vantage also for the smaller, less demanding workloads is consistency in the sense that you don't need to, your people don't need to learn new tools you don't have to recode anything if you have a basic analytic that you want to promote to your production environment or something that starts small and you want to scale it out to the rest of the enterprise and use all the data and maybe apply some SLAs and things. These are capabilities that, again, are inherent in Teradata software, but typically not available with those alternatives. The alternatives are designed for basic requirements. Um, I would characterize them as data mark grade analytics. And, and that's not disparaging, it's just saying that, you know, not as demanding. But sometimes as the companies grow, as the data volumes grow, as the users increase, as the contention for resources increase, you need the ability to optimize. You wanna be able to use indexing, for example. You want workload management because you cannot afford to have only best effort or first come first serve, or you can't afford to have queries running away and gobbling up the resources while everyone else is standing in line. So these are a number of reasons why enterprises love Teradata for the um, more sophisticated requirements, but those benefits also apply to the basic. And with our pricing model choice, both our capacity-based models, as well as consumption, our usage-based pricing, um, you could take advantage and Teradata is by far the lowest cost at scale, and we're very competitive at the lower end. You might be surprised, um, so I encourage you to take a look at our, at our consumption offer, which I see another question, is it available now? The consumption offer literally is going GA, generally avail general availability, on uh, this coming Monday, September 21st. So this is very exciting. 
We've had it in limited availability for um, almost a year now, just really ringing it out, getting getting uh, a few of the early users to really um, give us the feedback. And so we go back and we make improvements and modifications. And so we're quite excited about this. This really changes the game because consumption pricing is usage-based. It's literally based on only successful queries. And so this means queries that complete. So any query that uh, terminates due to technology. So for example, running out of school space, that would not be charged to the customer. So it's, it literally is usage-based. It's not a consumption-based offer where um, if the resource is available, you're paying for it. No, this is pure usage. And that means you don't have to worry about um, system sizing, resource utilization, capacity planning, forecasting, all that goes away, which is wonderful if you've got a new workload you're not quite sure how much it's going to be used. You uh, maybe it's a new data set. You have no idea. It, um, you know, is there gold in them dar hills? Meaning, like, is is it something you're really wanting to dig into, or is it something that, eh, you know, not, not so great? If if you are only paying for what you use and you don't use it very much, highly attractive, highly attractive. And so with Teradata, you have choice. Just like we offer deployment model choice, we have pricing model choice. And so that means. Certain workloads like production, always on environments, those are really more um, attuned to a capacity based model and always on and uh, high utilization type environment. Whereas these smaller, shorter duration workloads, unknown value workloads, this is perfect for a consumption usage based model. And you can have both on separate systems. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, does Vantage have the ability to automatically spin up clusters based on need like Snowflake? Uh, well, that's a great question. Our, our approach, as I mentioned, is really more based on software optimization. The short answer is yes, we can, you can scale. Um, it's not an auto scale. It's something that uh, we keep the user in control. So it's not going to automatically spin up resources, which you're going to have to pay for, by the way. It's based on user scaling. So we can scale up and down as changing instance sizes, and we can scale out and in as changing the quantity of instances, and you can stop and start. So you really have full range of, of choice there. It's not automatic um, because again, we actually guide our customers to use software optimization, things like indexing, uh, workload management. That is really a much more, not just sophisticated, but much more effective, cost-effective way to scale performance. We, if you double your infrastructure, you're doubling your cost for that type of infrastructure. And at best, you're going to get a doubling of performance. Teradata scales linearly, but most of our competitors do not scale linearly. So there's a decreasing efficiency. So you're paying twice as much for that resource, but with the alternatives, you're generally not getting twice as much because there's overhead involved. But with software optimization, We've seen customers get orders of magnitude. That, that doesn't mean 2x. That means like 10x or 100x improvement. And that's, that's a big deal, especially when you talk about operating at scale. If you've got millions of queries a day, uh, you, don't, you, know, you need every little efficiency improvement that you can get. And just throwing more hardware at, at a situation to satisfy concurrency requirements that's that's one way to do it. That's not the Teradata way to do it. We, we have a much more, uh, we believe, much more considered approach, much more sophisticated approach. And it's the kind of thing where if you're operating at small scale, a POC or something, you're not really going to appreciate the difference because, you know, what's a few pennies here and there when you're talking very small scale? When you're talking, again, millions or billions of queries, every penny or fraction of a penny makes a big difference. It really adds up. And so, you know, that's part of our, our workload management. Just checking the time, we can take maybe a couple more questions. Um, is Teradata more expensive in the cloud on Azure? Is the question is more expensive than what? Um, Teradata software pricing is consistent regardless of deployment choice. And we price by a metric we call T-Core. It's a combination of compute and I.O., about 80% I.O., 20% compute. Uh, what matters, though, most is that the Price of the software is the same regardless of deployment type. Um, and basically, the infrastructure, the resources, 
um, the optimization of those resources really depends on the, the mix of queries, the type of workloads. So for example, some workloads that, that customers are balanced, meaning there's a kind of an equal balance between compute and IO. And so um, think of it like a 50-50 kind of relationship just to simplify. Other workloads are skewed toward compute. They're compute bound. And, and yet other workloads are IO bound. Um, typically our on-premises systems, what we call IntelliFlex, they're highly optimized for IO bound workloads. Massive amounts of IO are by net. Uh, there's no contention, you know, 100% of that resources for those workloads. The public cloud, particularly the Azure environment, very well optimized for compute bound workloads, lots of compute. And the IO is shared, you know, just like any public cloud resources, shared environment. So there's not as much IO uh, available in the public cloud. For the vast majority of our customers and their workloads, that's no problem because most of their uh, use cases are not IO bound. So it's just fine. The reason I go into all this explanation is that um, that means the price you're paying for the infrastructure in the Azure environment is going to be very consistent with uh, the price for that in whether it's an on-prem environment or another environment, it might be another public cloud provider. So there's consistency there. What we recommend, frankly, is don't just take uh, sort of these um, headline statements about price or whatever. Talk to your Teradata account team and get a quote specific to your workload, your requirements. Something we can do very quick. We've got tools to do that. Particularly if you're an existing Teradata customer, we can look at your, your res usage, kind of take a analytics of the last three months, for example, and profile the environment and say, okay, to support those workloads in the in the um, in the Azure environment would would require this many resources. Typically, in in Vantage on Azure, what we recommend start small, and because you can always scale, you can always increase. I mean, yeah, you can start larger and decrease, but it's just more cost effective to start small, try it out, see how it is. If the performance is not what you need, then we can increase that. We can scale up, we can scale out. Um, you know, piece of cake. There are more questions coming in. I'll, maybe I'll answer one or two more. Can you mix and match consumption and capacity pricing? Um, the answer is yes, but not on the same system. So currently uh, it's at a system level. So typically customers would have a production environment, say on our capacity-based pricing, and then have other workloads maybe using the consumption-based pricing. So those are separate systems. We do have something called EPOD, Elastic Performance on Demand, which is kind of a hybrid. It's a reserve capacity plus on-demand usage. That can be on a, a single system. But in general, think of them as, as separate models on, on separate system. Can a customer scale up or down passively based on configurable parameters or rules? Um, well, with APIs into our console, the console is the name of our web-based management environment. Connecting APIs into the console, you can set up those, those rules uh, on your own. So we've not built that into the console. We don't want to duplicate capabilities that exist in other ecosystem software. But again, through those APIs, you can make that happen. Again, we don't, I want to discourage you from thinking that the way to increase performance is to scale hardware. That's, that's a brute force way to do it. That's not the way that Teradata recommends. We always recommend software. You've already paid for the software. It's part of the subscription price. Use it, leverage it. And this is exactly where Teradata solutioners come in, uh, solution engineers come in, uh, our architects. Uh, I mean, we've been at this for 40 years. Our software is proven. It is, um, it is a workhorse. I mean, so there's lots of domain expertise within the company and out in the community. We can help you optimize literally any environment. And, and, and that's not even talking about our our industry specific domain expertise, our data models, all our business consultants, uh, our industry consultants. There's a huge mass of talent on the Teradata team. Product is just part of it. Services is a huge part of it and tailoring things to your specific needs. Okay, um, I'm gonna cut off because I've gone a little bit over, but the questions are great, we appreciate it. For more information, please check out our website, teradata.com slash Azure and you'll see their product information, pricing, customers, case studies, white papers, 
as always, like I said before, don't just take my word for it. Certainly don't take the hype that you hear in the market. And believe me, there's a lot of hype going on, uh, particularly this week. Um, you know, do your research, talk to other customers, get the, get the scoop, get a second opinion, as they say in the medical field. And, um, and that's the best way to ensure that your investment in analytics is going to take you the furthest and satisfy your needs and, um, and, and really deliver what you need. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in. We've got more LinkedIn Live series coming up. The next one that we do focused on Azure, we'll have a discussion with one of my counterparts from Microsoft. And we'll, we'll dig in a little bit deeper on some of the specifics and answer even more of your questions. So thanks again. Have a great day. And uh, be sure to wash your hands and wear a mask. We'll see you.